Hi everyone, in this video, I will introduce the concept of custom dimensions. So um, actually, when you start with custom dimension with uh, either Matomo Analytics or Google Analytics, you do not really understand what custom dimension is about because that's a concept which is uh, a bit technical. So if you go within Matomo, actually, you will see here that you have a lot of different data. Okay, you have some data about the visits, you have some data about the devices, about the engagement, about the times of the visit, about the user ID, location, and so on and so forth. Um, that's great, but what about pushing out information that only you know that you would like to have them within? Uh, counted in your website, okay? And this is exactly what custom dimensions are about. It's about defining your own, um, let's say your own measurement and push those data out to the system. So in terms of example, let's say that if you would like to push information such as the number of people who enter within a specific room, uh, the weather which is outside from the visitor location, uh, if you would like to know actually the um, uh, let's say a meta description in the content of a web page. If you would like to know the number of uh, adding tag, if you would like to know uh, the number of words which are on a given page. But in any cases, any data which is not uh, already listed by default in Matomo Analytics. Okay, so these are uh, what custom dimensions are about. And when you dig it uh, a little bit into it, you will see that oh. It's kind of easy. You have a backend feature in order to define your custom dimension within the admin of Matomo Analytics. But then comes this part out where you need to add a specific uh, tracking code. And then uh, you somehow uh, got um, some issue in implementing it because you are not really sure about what does it uh, refers to. OK. so. Uh, I suggest that we're going to take one example. The example that we would like uh, to implement here is on this website, we would like to get as a custom dimension the author of the given post. Okay, for example, here it's root, here it's root. And if I look down below, I will see that here it's John and here it's Lucy. Okay, so how can I push those data out to Matomo Analytics? So by default, uh, you are 100% sure that this information is not pushed out to Matomo Analytics. And the reason is that um, Matomo Analytics, by default, do not know what your website is about. So for example, it doesn't know that here this is a blog. So it could not know, actually, that um, here there is some extra data that you will need to, to push, which are the author. So uh, let's define it. In order to define it, you just need, of course, to install the plugin named Custom Dimension, and then you need to go here within the administration. And then you just click here on custom dimensions. And here on custom dimension, you just create uh, your custom dimension. As you can see here, you have like two possibilities. You can either create it at the visit dimension level or at the action dimension level. What's the point of having two possibilities to define a custom dimension? Well. Uh, it's kind of simple. When you define it at a visit level, it means that actually uh, the data will be um, registered only once uh, during uh, the visit. So it means that here the data will be pushed only once per uh, visitors, let's say, per visit. And here it will be sent actually multiple times uh, during a visit, because the data will uh, probably need to be pushed several times. So that's the case, for example, uh, for an author. For example, during the visit of a specific, uh, let's say, browser, then you may encounter some different pages, and those different pages will have different author. Okay, So that's why uh, in this specific situation, you will need to push a custom dimension every time that the information is going to change, which is the case. Uh, here, right? So if we had visited it, uh, we, if we had defined it only at the visit level, uh, it, it will probably have pushed it only once. So it will have pushed probably only once the name Lucy, but will not have registered as well the name Ruth and the name John, and that's problematic. So in our case, we want to define it at the action level. So I basically just uh, went here on configure a new dimension. In my case, I cannot create uh, any 
dimension left because I already created five and I just uh, clicked here, gave it a proper name, so here author, and then it's telling you exactly which lines of code you need to implement. So in my case, that's pack push set custom dimension one dimension value. So I'm just gonna uh, copy this one out and it will recognize that actually this one is defined at the action level because the ID is number one, right? So. Uh, you do not have any chance to mix those two parts up because every time that you're going to create um, a new dimension, for example, here, it will take, for example, the number uh, eight, okay, because that will be the eight among all the custom dimensions you created. Okay, uh, so now let's implement this uh, line of code, right? So it can be pretty scary if you never used before um, if you never implement um, custom tracking code on your Matomo installation. And in order to uh, set it up easily, we are going to use Matomo Tag Manager. So Matomo Tag Manager, for the one who do not know what it is, that's a great plugin in order to easily deploy any tracking code without much any effort. So um, I'm going to take my container. So my container is, I think it's beta here. So that's beta. So Yes, go beta. Okay, so I'm taking beta here. And um, what I'm going to define now is I want to push a custom dimension every time that um, a new page is shut up. So uh, I'm going to go here, custom dimension, and I'm going to call it author matomo tag. Author matomo tag. Okay, great. So. Now I just need to uh, create a script, create a script, and the script is going to be this one, and blah, blah, blah. OK, great. So it's done. Uh, I'm going to put right at the beginning. And the reason is that I want this tag to be fired before um, Matomo um, analytics tracking code, and I think this is what uh, they're defining here. Nope. OK, now they are not talking about it, but I don't know. Um, I think it should be the case. OK, um, so now let's see what this data look like. So uh, we can see that actually this data belong to um, a URL and the URL as a class, and the class is URL FN. Yep. Okay, it has this, this value, and uh, that's it. So every time that I'm going to see a link text, which has for class this one, that should fire it. So let's. Okay, I'm just going to create like a condition here and my condition will be every time so i want it to fire every time that i have um this information so we say 2018 okay i'm gonna explain that in a second so uh okay i'm gonna change it and contain 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 something like this okay I'm going to precise this out here. OK, great. OK, that's interesting, but not finished yet. OK, now I need to know which variable do I need to pick it up in order to have it here properly listed. So uh, probably I'm going to define a variable. And this variable it's going to be create a new variable. And that's a visible element. That is. Um, um, not this one. Probably a class selector. And it's going to be like. Um, so I'm not very familiar with CSS selector. So CSS selector 
reference. That's a great page. Okay. And now I want to have the text element of a link. So where is it? Link. Select the active link. No. So I'm going to select it by class. Class. Okay, select all elements with this class. So I think it's going to be dot something. So just going to say like maybe dot and I'm not sure actually when there is a space. So I'm going to just do it like this. Um, Okay, and now I need to change this one out and let's see if that works. So DOM elements, probably the one I just created. So that's a bit messy at the moment. And now let's publish it and let's see if it works. Author as custom dimension, as custom dimension. Okay, great. And now let's refresh this page. Okay, so here is Lucy. And if I go here, here is root. And let's see if it worked out. If I go here, if I go here and that I look for the day of today and that I look at visitor log I will see is that me form field test yes it's me yep. as you can see there's no custom dimension yet Oh, it works. Okay, great. So seems that I'm a lucky one today, right? I was not 100% uh, sure of what I was doing, but uh, basically it works out uh, thanks to a, a quick implementation I did. So uh, that's, uh, that's great. So what did I do? Uh, why did it work? Okay, so uh, let's sum this one up. Uh, I should go now to here and explain it within Matomo Tag Manager. Okay. So basically what I did is I created a custom HTML tag. In this custom HTML tag, I just copy and paste the line of code in order to push within the database of Matomo Analytics a specific value. This value has been defined uh, through a variable that I created. And this variable, as it was not already existing within the list of pre-configured variable, or at least maybe I could, um, yeah, I could page variable, page title, page origin, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, actually I could, I think I could have taken out the visible element class uh, that would have probably been faster. But in my case, I don't know why, but I decided to go the hard way and I created a new variable that I gave it a nasty name. Actually, I should have never given a name like this one. I should have basically called it uh, like this class because that's better, okay? Um, and I selected, uh, I used the CSS selector and the CSS selector, I saw that here in order to grab a class, it had to start with a dot. And actually the class that I selected is a bit special because as you can see, the value uh, had some space uh, separator. So I added some extra dot here in order 
uh, to make it work properly. And so I created actually this specific variable. And by creating this specific variable, um, I asked actually to push this variable data within the value which was expected to be here. So it was in the case that was a dumb element that was now the class you are fan fan. And that's great because uh, now when this line is executed, it's pushing out this value as uh, the value within the custom dimension one. And I added it a trigger because I, as you can see on the first page here of uh, the website, I have this information uh, present multiple times, which means that if I'm executing actually this line of code on this web page, um, I will probably have uh, the first value taken and it will be uh, based data because of course, including on this uh, web page, I have John and I have Lucy. So that's why actually I added an extra condition, which is uh, when a URL is fired and which is containing actually um, the word um, in this folder, it means that actually that's, um, that's a blog post page where there is only one author indicated on it. So uh, the tracking code that I just show you uh, that I implemented is not 100% perfect because of course your website uh, may evolve and in some pages you may have several authors or even uh, the next year you will not be in 2018. So of course it will be 2019 and then the tracking code will not work and you will need to adjust it. But it's just giving you a broad idea of uh, what custom dimensions are, where they're useful and how you can take advantage of it. I really hope that actually it makes uh, your um, vision clearer about what custom dimensions are and do not hesitate actually to just add a comment to this video in order to say, please, can you show me a tutorial about how to set this specific custom dimension and I will do my best actually to create one video about it. Thanks for watching.